Hi there, my friend and friend. Web components are amazing. You can see I have some set up right here. Uh, there is a problem though, if you've ever used them, especially in CSS land, which is when you run into the limitations of dealing with the shadow DOM that can be kind of annoying. So for example, this product card that I have here right now, I have a um, attribute here that I can use, which is my theme of dark. And if I do a theme of dark, I get a dark card instead of a light card. And this is a very common thing that you might want to do on a component. Uh, is the ability to theme it differently or maybe have an alternate layout or something like that that you just set with an attribute. But this is kind of annoying because if I want all of my cards to be dark, I'm coming on each one of the cards and I'm setting it to dark and that's not really the ideal way to work, right? Ideally, I could either go on the body or whatever, the, an ancestor, some parent above it and be able to say like dark theme and just by setting the dark theme here, it would then cascade down inside. But depending on how you set up your web components, that's not really a possibility. And custom properties do solve one of the potential issues we have around this. So we're gonna be looking at how we can solve this issue with custom properties, but then we're gonna step up things even more by looking at style queries as well, because style queries really change the game when it comes to web components and some of the issues that I've run into when using them in the past. And we're gonna be doing that because this is part three of our series on style query spotlight, uh, where I've been exploring the fantastic things you can do with style queries. And I really think web components are a great use case for them. So looking at these product cards that we have here, just really fast, if we come and take a look, here's like the CSS that I have set up for them. And there is this dark theme that's currently coming through. We're just looking if the host and the host is just like the component itself has the theme of dark, then I can select my different things and, and change different colors on them. And the problem that comes up is when we have everything set up here, and I know if you use template literals, uh, there's other ways of exposing things into the light DOM than I've set things up right now. But let's say I just wanted to select this name that I have right there. And I just go in my regular CSS that I have, and I come here and I do dot name, and let's say font size is 10 rem, and I say the color is red, and we throw an important on here. And let's take that and put an important over here and save those and nothing's actually coming through. And the reason for this is just the way encapsulation works and the shadow DOM works, where I can't get into those things and select them that way, right? Uh, and we wanna set things up sort of with the light DOM. And if you don't know about the shadow DOM and light DOM, the light DOM's just your regular DOM. Uh, and the reason this doesn't work is because if I go and look here, there's nothing here for me to actually select. Like there is no name in the DOM. It's hiding in the shadow DOM, uh, which is over what's getting constructed with the, the JavaScript. And so I can't access it. And again, there are other ways you can set up a web component to make things available for the light DOM, but then you also don't get your encapsulation and other things. Something that's really interesting though with this is that we do get inheritance. So if I just come on my body and I say color is red and I hit save, you can actually see some of the colors here have switched over. And that's because these numbers are actually inheriting it the way I, I've set like specific colors on the prices and other things. Uh, but on the price, I never declared a color. So it's just inheriting the color like you would normally expect it to because things are still inherited into our web components. And there's this weird, I don't know what you'd call it, just this weird thing there where some things sort of inherit in, but then there's this wall where you can't directly select things to style them either. Whatever. Uh, the, the, the solution that we have these days tends to be to use custom properties because custom properties have the advantage of being inherited. And so to be able to do this, what we're gonna do is just in the regular CSS, I can come in with some custom properties here where my product card, background, product name, product price, uh, and I can set these all up for my dark theme. And you might either have different colors here for your light theme, or what we'll look at now is an alternative solution where we only have it set up here. Uh, and ideally I'd probably have these set up as, uh, and I just realized I have sort of a mixed syntax here. Uh, so let's come in at least with matching syntax on these. Uh, but I'd probably have these colors in my root somewhere and then set you know, have them getting passed down to how I'm using them here, or there's different ways you could approach this, obviously. It doesn't have to be these explicit names, but it makes it easier for demo land. Uh, where what I'm gonna do is come onto my product card, and here where we have the background, we can change that to red, and now my cards have this red background. I'm gonna say var product card bg, which uh, is jumping over to the dark theme. Do I, did I leave? I left the dark theme there. We're already seeing that it's working. <laughs> we spoiled it, but that's fine. Uh, let's come back over to here though, where uh, I wanna have that as my product card BG, but then I can put a fallback value. So if we don't have one, so I could say that it's white, that's gonna look like that. If I just come in with a red, let's say, 
we can see that we're getting the red. So this would sort of be my, my default color as my fallback. And then this is the new one that I want. So then just really quickly here, I'm going to switch up a few things like my name. This one would get my var product card name comma three, three, three to get that fallback value. And then the last one that I want is my price. So if we come and find my price, which is right here, and we're just going to copy that, drop that value in here and make this my price. So in doing that, it's all set up nice. It looks exactly like it did before, but the advantage now is over here, like we saw, if I do a dark theme and I hit save, all of them are going to switch over. And I clearly made a mistake on my price because the price didn't actually switch. Uh, so we have a couple of other things that we might want to change here. Uh, it should be doing it. Did I make a typo? Um, price product card price. Oh, I put a dark color for some reason, uh, which we, oh, I left a semicolon here. Is that it? There we go. That looks a little bit better. Uh, so the, the price is coming through and we can't see these because I didn't actually change the color of those, but you get the idea of how this could work. And this is a nice first step and it's what I would encourage, you know, using custom properties like this for, and it means that we don't have to come on, on each one of these to add a theme or whatever. We can set the theme on the parent or anything, right? If your entire page has a specific theme, this could also work, which is fantastic, but it does leave us with a bit of a limitation still. And that's because like right now I'm setting like my product card, BG name, other things here in this dark theme, but it's kind of weird that I need to do that like this to let those things inherit in when I have basically everything sort of encapsulated here within my web component, right? Where everything's living here. And I guess we don't, we don't need this anymore, <laughs> uh, but everything's living here, but then my dark theme is actually getting set out here. And so let's actually, let's leave my dark theme class there, but we're going to, we're going to take all of this, uh, and hit save. So that goes away for now. Uh, and the dark theme is going to get changed a little bit because what we're going to do is come up into the card itself, which I have right here, which is the parent of, you know, this is my, my main element of my web component that's right here. And what we can do is actually control the theme directly from here using a style query. And so to do that, we're going to do an at container because style queries are built on uh, container queries. And if you haven't watched my first video on them, I would suggest that you do uh, to get a bit of an idea of how they work, but you'll be able to follow along with this pretty easily. We're going to say if we have a style and the style in this case will be my theme of dark, then we can set anything up we want. So we can actually just change CSS here. If we wanted, I could just say my background is red and you can redeclare things and just come up with new styles here if you wanted to. We're going to see an example of that, but we could stick with what we had before where we're just changing some custom properties. Uh, or applying those. And so if I hit save on this, nothing has changed yet, but we can come over and if we look in my index, we have my dark theme here. And if we go to my style sheet, my dark theme, we can just say has a theme of dark and boom, it works. And this is cool. And this is also in my opinion, a bit more useful because this theme getting switched to dark here just switches the theme custom property that we have set. Uh, and then this could be a lot of other changes that are happening, whether it's component by component where everything is styled a little bit differently. It really depends on the setup that you have, obviously, but being able just to switch sort of the toggle of the theme and then being able to retheme these encapsulated styles is kind of neat. And we saw there are other ways to do this, obviously, but we can get a lot more complicated than this as well. Uh, and it opens up new doors by being able to use our style queries this way. And because in this case, all I'm doing is changing the value of a few things that are set here. And I guess you could take uh, a longer approach to do this same type of thing, but we could come in with something a little bit different here as well. I'm gonna come right here and we can do layout changes. So we can actually come in with a horizontal layout as an example. And how would I be able to like enable or disable the horizontal layout? We could do it again through a prop that we're setting on each one of these, or, you know, we layout is equal to horizontal. And then that would definitely work. We'd have to do it on every single card, which is really annoying uh, to do because you might have some sort of, you know, your, your parent here, your grid that's set up and you just want all the children to behave in the same way. So jumping back over here. And, and of course the other thing is like, even if I wanted to, like I could set this up to sort of try and it, have it be a modifier class in some way where I'm, I'm placing this on the parent element over here, 
but then because we have the shadow dom that we can't penetrate inside of like this card selector this footer they have no way of getting into the shadow dom so we need all of these styles to be set up here but instead of my product card horizontal layout like we have right here what we're going to do and this is in the wrong spot right now but that's okay we can say at container and then we need to say style is my product card layout and then we could say horizontal and this is what i love about these like style queries is using them in ways where not necessarily related to existing styles on things but more about me choosing to enable or disable a little bit like a modifier class but that we can do on the outside of things or manipulate in different ways like we're, we're, all, we're gonna see another example of that in a second uh, but we can say that we have the horizontal layout and then i'm going to move all of this up just inside of the card because container queries do need to be nested in something. Um, and let's hit save on that. And then let's just grab this custom property that's right here and jump back on over to our regular CSS. And just for the demo, we're gonna enable it right here where we can say it's our horizontal. And when I do that, we get a different layout for our cards, uh, which is pretty cool, right? Because then let's just duplicate what we have here right now. We can duplicate that down, but this second version uh, we will have without the dark theme and you know what, I'm at, we'll do a horizontal layout like this. Uh, just, and grid, uh, we'll say dot horizontal layout. You'd probably want a different type of modifier or you don't necessarily even need this to be on a modifier. It could be on some sort of, you know, depending on, again, the situation that you're putting it on. So here we have the dark theme that has one layout and here we have a light theme that has a different layout on it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then other advantages with these, depending on how you'd want to set it up and how you'd want to use it, but this is the beauty of these being on custom properties, is you could technically combine here with something like in and, and we could say width is greater than 400 pixels uh, or something like that. Of course, if we did that, we do need a defined container. So here we're going to say a container type of inline size and Let's open up our dev tools and open up responsive mode. So at small screens, they're still stacking. And then at large screens, they switch layouts. So this is, you know, with a modifier class, we can't really do that. But when we're looking at container queries, because this is, this is the size query and this is the style query, and we can query both at the same time. Or again, depending on how you're setting things up, you might want this to be a little bit more dependent on the main component itself. And so this could even be within a media query uh, right here where you say at media is width greater than 600 pixels. And then we could wrap that. So we're only conditionally turning the layout on depending on now the size of the viewport. And you can see we have the different layouts coming there. These are probably not the most practical examples in the real world of exactly how I'm setting things up. But I do think there's just so much power in this ability to conditionally turn styles on and off in different situations. Because I probably wouldn't have this in a horizontal layout. I would have this as part of a component somewhere else where I have a certain layout that I need to maintain and I can have all of that sort of encapsulated even though I'm using some web components that normally I can't get inside. Now I have that ability to do so using my style queries and media queries and other things, which are just, I don't know. I think this opens up some really interesting doors. I'd love to know what you think about style queries. So please leave a comment down below and let me know. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how they work from like the very basics of it or how we can use them for theming a website in general, I've looked at both of those in my previous parts of the style query spotlight, which you can find right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enabler of awesome, Andrew, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.